Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the January 2016 CT is Us quiz. Our first quiz of what promises to be 12 outstanding quizzes over the next year. Welcome to 2016. This is an interesting case. When you look at the images, what you see on both the coronals and the 3D volume rendering and MIP is that you see a large mass involving the patient cecum and right colon. You could think about Crohn's disease, but there you see submucosal edema typically. This is really mass-like. I guess in theory it could be lymphoma, though lymphoma only of the colon is pretty rare, except maybe in a B-cell type situation, an immunosuppressed patient, but that's kind of rare. It doesn't really look like pseudomembrous colitis. There you have more of an accordion type appearance. It's usually not so focal, though it can be. The most likely diagnosis in this case is an adenocarcinoma of the cecum and indeed that's what we were dealing with in this patient. This is an interesting case. What do you see? Well, you look at the left kidney, and you can see that the normal parenchyma is compressed by what appears to be a subcapsular collection. You can see the density of the subcapsular collection is, in fact, blood. You can see it uh, nicely on the axial view, but especially nicely on the coronal view. You can think about causes of bleeding. Well, causes might be trauma. Might, For example, you might have put a stent in or be in an MVA. Underlying renal tumors or angiomyelipomas can bleed. Occasionally, AVMs can bleed. And occasionally, vasculitis can bleed. So all of those would be possibilities of why the patient bled. But the best diagnosis in this case is I don't see a mass. I don't see vasculitis. I don't see an AVM. The best answer that works for every one of these is a page kidney, subcapsular blood compressing the kidney. You need to make certain this responds, the therapy that this resorbs. If not, you can develop a hypertension secondary to compression over time. This patient was evaluated for chest pain, and I want to know what the best diagnosis was in this case. And you see the patient has aortic valve replacement surgery, and you see a low-density lesion there. That's not a flow artifact, and that's not a motion-related artifact. That's a th filling defect on the aortic valve, but it's on the prostatic aortic valve. If it was on the normal aortic valve, the uh, original aortic valve in this patient, you might have thought about a fibroelastoma. That'd be a good diagnosis. But in this patient with a graft with aortic valve replacement surgery, this is a thrombus on the aortic valve, a very nice example and a very nice diagnosis. This is an interesting case. If you look only at the images, you're seeing a number of infiltrates, several are cavitary, many are pleural-based and wedge-shaped. Pneumonia gives you infiltrates. You're going to have multifocal pneumonia, but the cavities, which can occur in pneumonia, but the peripheral aspects of things makes me shy away from pneumonia. Head and neck tumors can give uh, metastases that are necrotic, but again, usually not wedge-shaped at the periphery, usually more centrally. And same thing with metastatic lung cancer, or any tumor can give you cavitary lung metastasis, or some more frequent than others, like head and neck, or some GYN tumors. But when you have the cavities, when you have the wedge-shaped appearance, when you look at the total picture in this case, septic emboli is in fact your best answer. This is a great case. Again, looking at the images, what you see is the aorta is occluded beneath the renal arteries, and then you reconstitute flow in the common iliac vessels. You see a number of different collaterals present. What is going on here? Well, sarcomas of the aorta, I guess, could obstruct the aorta, or sarcomas can grow into the aorta, but this really shows no distortion in tissue planes. It's not too early of a timing. You know, you can if you scan too early of the patient's bad cardiac output, you can see flow changes relatively, but not disappearance, obviously. And Takayashu's aortitis, left subclavian artery most common, but typically does not occlude the aorta. It can rarely, perhaps. This was an acute occlusion of the aorta. And what helps you with this case a bit is when it's chronic occlusion, you see many more collaterals. Here there are some collaterals, but not a whole lot. Just a beautiful example with dual energy and bone removal. Look at this mass, a large cystic mass, which is pancreatic, calcifications in the head and in the body of the lesion. What's most impressive is its size and its cystic nature. Well, multilocular cystic nephromas, or MCN, can occur in middle-aged females, 
They commonly occur in the body tail junction, but they're 5 cm. A spent tumor, which can calcify, particularly in the periphery, can be cystic and solid, but again, typically the patients are 20. Pseudocysts typically don't calcify, surely with this pattern. The most likely thing, large cystic lesions, calcifications, often with the calcification central and punctate, you're thinking about a serous cyst adenoma. And that indeed was an example. And this is a very, very impressive serous cyst adenoma. This is a very classic case, and I showed this at the RSNA. You see the patient with an endovascular stent, and you can see there's now blood in the patient's native aortic lumen. Uh, this is classic for a type 2 endoleak. It's the most common endoleak we see, very nicely defined in this scenario. This patient has epigastric pain, and when you look at the non contrast scans, you see a cystic lesion either arising off the stomach or abutting the stomach. And when you give IV contrast, you can see that it enhances very brightly. And in fact, when you look carefully, it's coming from the splenic artery. And that makes it very easy to call this a splenic artery aneurysm. Lymphoma can give nodes. This is homogeneous. It's not lymphoma. Desmoid tumors can occur in the mesentery, but not this low density. This could be a gastric gist tumor. They're usually exophytic lesions, so perhaps it was a chance. They're usually not so cystic, quite frankly, but with the bright enhancement, you know you're dealing with a splenic artery aneurysm. This is a great case. Patient was having claudication in the lower extremities, and you look at the images, and what you see is looking at the stent in the left common iliac artery, look at its angulation. It's basically 90 degrees, beautifully shown on the coronal imaging, but spectacularly shown when you look at the 3D volume rendering. And this is not the category of endoleak. This is stent failure. This stent has collapsed upon itself. It's amazing there's still blood flow going through the stent, but this would be a fairly true surgical emergency. Nice example. This is an interesting case as well. When you look carefully at the coronal images, you see multiple patchy zones of low attenuation. Now, if I just describe low attenuation to you, you could think about tumors, but this obviously is not tumor. It's more wedge-shaped. So then you're thinking about pyelonephritis, which could be bilateral or unilateral. But more importantly, you're thinking about renal infarction. You can see this thinning of the cortices, and there's this very much web-shaped appearance. That gives you the appearance of renal infarcts. And this is a classic case of bilateral renal infarction in a patient who had endocarditis. So that's the end of January 2016. Ten excellent cases. Hopefully you enjoyed the cases. Hopefully you learned something. And hopefully we'll see you later on CTSS. Have a great day. Bye-bye.